Okay, here we are at the, uh, I think it's the Parks Bennett lot, 400 acres, I believe, and change, uh, part of the uh, recent uh, sale uh, process for the old Chadburn land, and uh, we're, I don't know, half a mile, mile west of the Bethel community forest. Uh, this, uh, we've walked uh, about an hour here. This is, uh, personifies the classic problem of managing what I'm almost certain were old field pine stands. Um, we were standing here 150 years ago. We'd be in a hay field probably. Uh, that uh, was, of course, abandoned like most farmland in Maine. Uh, reverted to white mixtures of eastern white pine and other species. It was purchased probably by Phil Chadburn sometime, I don't know when, in the 30s or 40s probably, and managed by them for decades and decades using their particular approaches they had. Uh, this is uh, a very interesting property because it's recently been harvested, I think, for the just the largest pine trees. That appears to be the case looking at the stumps. There's, there's skid trails that you can see here, fresh trails of hardwood sprouts that are maybe two years old. But the remaining growing stock here of pine is really a very high quality. I suspect there's a tree right in the, in the camera view here down to our northeast that looks like it might have actually been pruned. Um, however, so that's the good part. There is a nice, uh, fairly scattered, but uh, all the pine here is a very high quality. That's pretty much all that's in the overstory. There's no, we haven't even seen a merchantable oak tree. There was a hemlock of ravine along a riparian strip. But in general, the, the timber here is virtually all pine where we are. I think as we proceeded up the, uh, we proceed up the hill, we would see more hardwood based on the photo. Um, so that part is good. The, the part that is bad silviculturally and from a long-term management standpoint is that these this repeated light cutting from above that uh, Chadburn was famous for uh, has just promoted a, a lush, uh, dense understory and even now a midstory of hardwood species. Uh, there is some oak in it and that would be well adapted. A lot of red maple sprouts and beech. Uh, I don't see much uh, conifer, uh, uh, including uh, very little pine. You find little patches of pine here and there, but that form of management um, while it might be uh, one way to manage the pine growing stock, is not uh, because you're always taking out your large trees, you tend to lose your big seed sources. I mean, there are plenty of big trees here that I'm sure produce seed in a good year, but uh, there, if you, any seed fall now and that stand like this is gonna lead to nothing except for maybe in these recently disturbed uh, trails because of this very dense hardwood midstory. So in some ways, and uh, this is not good news, to, to anybody who want to purchase this. This is not unlike the Bethel Community Forest, which has been cut heavily, and the regeneration is identical. The big difference here is that there's actually a merchantable growing stock here that you can work with and uh, maybe uh, manage your way out of this problem. What should have been done here, now peop some people think you gotta give up on these stands, these old field stands, they wanna go to hardwood, naturally succeeding to hardwood, because they were probably naturally mixed wood stands with some pine, but not much in them, hardwood, hemlock stands probably in nature. Um, our management on the university forest has certainly shown otherwise. You can, with the right efforts, keep these stands in pine, but it, it involves uh, aggressive control of the hardwood regeneration right at the time when you're doing the cutting or right afterwards. We tend to treat stumps or treat recent sprout clumps uh, so that the understory remains fairly open and then receptive to pine seed fall and pine regeneration. And then you, we would have a pine shelterwood condition here instead of a hardwood uh, regeneration shelterwood condition with the pine overstory. Uh, so I think my, and the pines, most of these pines standing, I think are quite a ways from maturity. I would let them grow for maybe decades. I think this would be where, this is where the, you need to take a sharp pencil and analysis and data would tell us this better. And also inform the next thing I'm going to say, which is like, I think probably if I were going to manage this and I owned it, I would keep, uh, I would aggressively thin this hardwood stratum. I think to just kill this uh, randomly is, is too far, it's too well developed, right? I would try to manage it because it's very open in places by 
crop tree oriented thinning favoring the oaks and probably single tree maples and other you know relatively valuable hardwood species grow them to small saw log size meanwhile keeping much of this pine growing stock as a long-term seed source once that hardwood would mature and this is going to be decades hence um, then you would the, the future foresters would then have a seed source to be able to regenerate back a pine mixed wood which would be the natural forest here I think just to give up on the pine just by cutting the pine uh, is the wrong thing to do saying oh ecologically this is going to go to hard we might as well cut this pine that that would not be what I would recommend and I think that would be counterproductive because then you would have nothing but hardwood and you'd be just like the Bethel community forest where you have a big management problem of a you know a single cohort of uh, hardwood that's not merchantable that needs to a lot of investment I think NRCS cost share practices would allow you to do a lot of this we've done it certainly done it on our own lands in a different county but I think thinning this hardwood uh, lower stratum underneath this pine would be a decent practice and I don't think you need to cut any more of the overstory pine so this would be a, pro a property that you would probably want to just sit on, not cut much wood off of it for, you know, a period of time. Uh, at, but, to, to, but it would, unlike the Bethel Community Forest, it is currently growing, um, you know, I don't dare estimate, uh, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe even more dollars per acre per year with these residual pines, but you can't cut them, right, because then you lose that growth potential. You need to, like, let that build back. So, um, an interesting case uh, and, you know, probably a microcosm of a lot of uh, pine silviculture in, in this part of Maine.